Hello and welcome to earlymusicsources.com. My name is Elam Otem, and today we'll talk about the Italian keyboard partitura, what Frescovaldi had to say about it, and what you can do with it. In past episodes, we mentioned the Italian keyboard partitura, an open score of four parts that was the main way of rendering polyphonic keyboard repertoire in Italy for a period of roughly 100 years. We also quoted the famous Girolamo Frescobaldi, who published most of his works in this way, saying how this practice is highly challenging yet paramount for serious musicians. In this episode, we will examine this kind of notation in detail, see what challenges it poses and what we gain by practicing it. Let's start. This short toccata is the very first piece in Frescobaldi's publication from 1635, Fiori Musicali. Apart from two books of toccatas that were published in Intavolatura notation, the other four publications of Frescobaldi's keyboard music were printed in Partitura, open score. When I was in my early 20s and saw this particular score for the first time, I was rather shocked. I couldn't believe that someone could actually read it. I immediately got a copy of it and started the painful process of developing the skill of reading it. There seem to be three main difficulties. One, instead of combining all the voices on two staves, one for the left hand and one for the right, one is presented with four parts on four separate staves. The players then need to decide for themselves how these four parts should be divided between the two hands. For example, in this first bar, the first chord would probably be played with three voices in the right hand and one voice in the left hand, but on the second minim, the tenor would be taken by the left hand. 2. Clefs while modern-day musicians are mainly accustomed to two to three clefs, in order to read these keyboard scores, one has to deal with no less than seven clefs. These come in two main sets, which are equivalent to the vocal sets of clefs from that time. The standard set, C1, C3, C4, and F4, and the high set, G2, C2, C3, and F3. The multitude of clefs makes it harder to be fluent in all of them. Instead, one may need to find other ways to orient oneself when reading. 3. Alignment, or rather, disalignment. In most printed scores, probably due to the nature of the movable type printing technique, there was no vertical alignment between the parts within each bar. Furthermore, within each part, the notes are not spaced according to their values. For example, see this bar, where four notes with different values are spaced more or less equally, with no apparent reason. Due to this general difficulty, and as opposed to modern scores, it is often very hard to imagine the music by only looking at it. One must actually play the parts together in order to know how they sound together. In the case of scores that survived in manuscript copies, however, this aspect is a bit better, as when writing by hand, one is not mechanically restricted as to what one can write and where. Now I'll play for you this toccata, so you can follow along with the score and notice the difficulties it poses. Of course, you may also enjoy the beauty and refinement of this music.
While some of the difficulties connected with keyboard scores are also encountered in the modern skill of score reading, two points should be made. One, the problem of alignment, which is rather central, is found primarily in the historical scores. And two, while the modern skill of score reading is mostly relevant for conductors and repetiteurs, historically it was necessary for every keyboard player. Now, let's see what we gain by trying to overcome the challenges the historical keyboard scores pose. 1. The keyboard score allows for the presentation of polyphonic information that it is otherwise not possible to convey in intavolatura notation. Everything from simple voice crossing to time signatures that apply only to individual voices can be supported by the keyboard score, showing the voices in the clearest way possible. 2. Since much of the repertoire printed in score consists of complicated imitative genres, such as fantasie, ricercare, and capricci, having the voices so clearly separated is extremely helpful in recognizing the themes and their treatment throughout the piece. 3. Since the voices are so clearly separated, we are forced, when playing, to think in voices, and learn to express the four individual voices with our ten fingers. This is in opposition to a blind execution of notes according to a recipe, as is possible in the case of ready-made intabulations. 4. Taking several voices and playing them on an instrument demands that one process the material, moving from abstract notes to physical instructions of which key is to be struck with what hand and when. In the case of intabulations, this process is done in advance. But in the case of scores, the player must go through this process on the fly while reading the music, in a way making an intabulation in real time without writing it down. In order to do that, one has to have a deeper understanding of the music and how it works. Going through this decoding process helps in this endeavor and makes the player more aware of what he is doing. This is probably what Frescobaldi meant when he wrote that this practice differentiates the true maestri from the ignorance. You might think to yourself, this is all great, but reading from scores is surely too hard for me. Well, it is hard, but it's definitely possible and very rewarding. Here are some tips for those just starting out with score reading. Start with easy pieces. For example, Frescobaldi's Fantasias, although they are his first publication from when he was only 25, might be the most complicated and messy music he ever wrote. It's absolutely not to be recommended for beginners. Instead, start with the little Kyrie and Christe versets from Fiori Musicali. Many of them use a slow cantus firmus in one of the voices so one may be able to free some brain power for the moving parts. If you are stuck and believe that you will never be able to play this one bar with all the voices correctly, as actually happened to me many times, take a big breath and play only two voices together, then add a third one and eventually you can play all the voices. The work is very hard, but extremely satisfying. On top of that, the music is of top quality and beauty. I'll play for you this first Kyrie.
This was our show about the Italian keyboard partitura. We hope you enjoyed it. Do try to play from such scores yourself and share with us your experience. Don't forget to check the special page on our website with all the footnotes and other extra information. If you enjoy early music sources, consider supporting it on Patreon. Comment, share and like. See you next time at earlymusicsources.com.